Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth game development with Python 3 and Pygame uh, tutorial video in our series here. Uh, where we left off, we could control our car, move it left or right, but we have no boundaries and even if we added boundaries we have to not only add a boundary but also add some sort of a handling to say if we hit that boundary what happens. I suppose you could just make a boundary and just not let the character go past that boundary. A little more fun to make them crash anyways, so we're going to say that's a crash if you go off the screen, make it a little more challenging. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and add in some logic here that not only calculates if we've moved off the screen, but if we have, let's go ahead and crash. And then when we crash, we have some sort of you know message that we want to display to the screen, like, hey, you crashed, idiot. And then from there, we can maybe replay or the user could choose to exit out or whatever. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So uh, to do this, we're going to need to make a few changes to our script here. So we have this sort of wow loop that we're treating like a game loop, but this isn't really the best way to do it. Uh, so we're going to kind of we're going to need to change that. So first of all, we're going to say um, we're going to come down here. We'll take crashed, uh, and then we're going to take this. We'll take x and y's definition. We can leave uh, the car image, and we should be able to leave like all this other stuff up here. Because this stuff, the stuff up here is pretty much like constants. Um, so display width, we don't intend to ever change. We don't want to change height. We don't change the color definitions. We don't change the clock. We're not going to change the car image, all that stuff. So, But the stuff that we want to truly be variable, we have to put into this game loop. So we're going to say define uh, game underscore loop. And this all will be our in our game loop here. And that's not including this. And then so we'll highlight everything from clock tick all the way up to where we defined game loop. And at least in IDLE, uh, what you can do is hit tab, and that will tab everything over. Um, so anyway, that's what we'll do there. And so we'll put all, everything under game loop now. Um, and then we need to run game loop here. So we just call game underscore a loop. And so this runs the game loop for us. Now, just to make sure we've got everything we're supposed to have here, let's go ahead and save and run that and make sure that runs. Uh, it did not run for us. So, while not crashed for whatever reason, did not want to run. Hmm, game loop, X, Y, something here probably has failed in game loop. Uh, I didn't witness any failure there, but let's run it one more time and see if we get a fail. Hmm. Um, trying to decide what, what what would cause it to exit like that on us. Update game fill white game loop. Oh, <laughs> man, amateur. That's probably it. This game loop just references the game loop. Oh, man, what an amateur. Anyway, gotta have your parameters there. There we go. I was like freaking out. Okay. So left, right, cool. So our game loop works uh, as long as you're not a big idiot like me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, when you want to make a function run, you have to put the, the empty parameters behind it, um, or after it, rather. OK, so our game loop now is displayed correctly. Now, the next thing we want to do is we don't necessarily want to leave the game loop just because we crashed. Uh, we only want to really leave our game loop when, because um, basically game loop will continue to run and as soon as, whenever game loop is done running, we're gonna run quit. So if we crash, that's gonna quit the game. Maybe the user wants to play again. So we don't really want that to be the case anymore. So actually we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna call, we're gonna change crashed to game exit. And then while not game exit, we run this loop. So it'll still run this loop um, and do all the things that we wanted to do. And now we're ready to handle specifically the crash uh, sequence. Um, now don't get your hopes up. We're not actually going like, to have the car break up or anything. Uh, <laughs> feel free to do that at the end if you want. But um, actually we just need to handle what happens when the user crashes. So uh, we'll leave that. that uh, good. Let's, let's just check our logic real quick. Make sure it works. Everything seems to be working. So we'll leave. For some reason it doesn't want, doesn't want to exit though. I know why. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> instead of, right, so our, our quit command is still being called crashed. So anyway, 
So we're, we're assigning true to crashed. So that was the problem. So so we have game exit equals false while not game exit. But then if the event type is a quit, it has to be game exit equals true. I had left crash there. Another perfect example where you're like trying to hit the X and you can't quit. You can do that to your to your uh, to your little gamers too, if you want. If you want to be really mean, I suppose you can do that. So otherwise, we'll just do this. And now let's run it one more time. Make sure our exit works. And it does. Okay. So now we're ready to kind of add um, some more logic uh, to things. So uh, the first thing we want to ask is if the car, because we don't have anything to run into yet, but we do have edges, and we want to like enforce crossing over the edges, and we're going to enforce that with a crash. So we're going to say if the user crosses over the edge, that's a crash. So um, we'll allow everything to happen. Actually, I was going to do it there, but we'll allow the change to occur the game display to update everything, but then down after we've drawn the car, um, hmm, I was gonna let us do an update, but I think after we draw the car, before we do the actual update, what we're gonna do is run our questionnaire, basically. And this is our logic, basically. So this is our event handler, but then we have to handle logic. So an object doesn't actually crash into an object in, in any game, it doesn't happen that way. Instead, what happens is objects kind of overlap each other, and if they overlap, we can build some logic that says, hey, these objects overlapped. That's not possible in the world. And we have some sort of handling for these, this overlapping that's occurred. So same thing here. What we're going to ask is if, if the car, it's not like it crashes into the edge of the screen, really, but if the car happens to pass over that you know, arbitrary number that we set, we're going to say, boom, you crashed. So, and it just makes sense, like, to make that the edge of the screen instead of, like, you know, 100 pixels away from the edge of the screen just to troll your, your, your game players. So we're going to make it the edge of the screen, but you can make it anything, really. Um, so we're going to say if x, and x is the location of our car, so we're going to say if x is greater than the display width, so if x is greater than the display width, um, so that's how wide our screen is. Um, so if it's greater than how wide our screen is, um, but then we have to add another question to it, but I'll show you why in a minute. If So if x is greater than the width or x is less than zero, then we're gonna say you crashed. So for here, um, I really wanted to show sooner I guess we'll call a game exit. So I'll just say game exit equals true. because I just want to illustrate uh, something that happens a lot. So game exit equals true, and it will break the game. So we'll save and run that. And so x equals zero happens over here, and then x greater than display width happens over here. So first I'll show you zero. We crash into the wall, game exits, as we expected. No big deal. But now let me show you why the other bit of code needs an addition to it. So we're able to do that, and we actually came back. So really, we've crashed significantly in the wall. I mean, at this point, the driver is dead. So what we have to uh, understand is x, again, is right here. It's this top left corner. So that's why over here it worked. But over here, it's not going to work until you're like all the way over. Okay. So to remedy that, we have to account for this. So uh, the question was if x is greater than display width, but it's not greater than display width. It's greater than display width minus uh, car width. So what's the width of our car? Now we have not defined car width. How do we know what the width of our car is? Well, if we go over uh, to our image, we can find out what the width of our car is. In my case, it's you know it's the width of your image basically. So after you've made your little image. You're going to want to you know, make the square as tight as you can. And my image width happens to be 73 pixels. So we're going to say car underscore width equals 73. You need to use what, if you use my image, then it's 73, but you would need to use whatever image of your, or width of your image, um, whatever that is. So we'll come back down here, and now we've got car width. So now when we run this, and we take our car, and we crash over to the edge. We actually have a true, you know, we crashed. <laughs> so, so it's useful to 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 uh, to include that that width stuff. 
And, it's, and you have to keep this in mind because as you have objects as well, if you just reference X, that object could crash in. But as long as it doesn't cross over the upper left, then you'd be fine in theory. So you have to take this into account as well. So anyway, uh, that's our first uh, showing. I thought I was going to also include um, the game over sequence, but I think we'll, we'll save that for another video. This one's already 10 minutes somehow. I don't remember how we, how we got to 10 minutes. But <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're going to do the crash sequence or really game over sequence uh, in the next video. So stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments, as usual, leave them below. And also, as usual, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.